Good morning and welcome. It's a bit of a damp, rainy morning, quiet morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. And we welcome all of you, those of you who are worshiping remotely. I've already seen a login from Texas and South Carolina this morning. Welcome. You are as part of our extended family and community, and we're so happy you are here. We have a number of announcements this morning. First of all, if you had been around here yesterday, we had a beehive of activity. And I'm going to ask David Bartoff Jr. if he will come forward and share with us what all this activity was about. Just tell us what you're building, what it's for, and why you're doing it. Hi, everyone. My name is David. <laughs> my, my name is David Barthoff. I'm the senior patrol leader for Troop 495 here in Linwood, PA. And I started my Eagle Scout project yesterday. Um, it's a kids game. It's called a it's called a Gaga Pit, and uh, we're, we decided to put it. Um, with the permission of Mr. Gaspari to put it in Gaspari Park. Um, we're gonna be, you'll see us if you drive by next Saturday, rain or shine, putting it in there. So, I mean, I'm excited for it. I know some of the boys are excited to get in there once it's assembled. Um, so, yeah, we're all really excited about it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's encourage you, please. David will be our number two Eagle Scout in our troop. We have other boys that are on that path. We are just so privileged to have this as one of our biggest ministries of this church and the work that we do in reaching out to the community. Remember, we are, as United Methodists, called to go to the world as our parish. And when we do things like this, thank you, David, the community goes, oh, I probably can help that church reach out to people in the community too. And we are looking, as we know, we have partnerships with our local churches, the Bridge Church, uh, the AME Church, Mount Olive Baptist. We are here for the families and the neighbors in our community. So thank you, David, for being part of this. And you know, our prayer garden was our first Eagle Scout project. So this is all a wonderful gift to the community. Please update your phone number and your email um, because we are launching our one call tell all system where you will be able to get a phone call perhaps once a week uh, updating you on things of importance in the church and also giving you uh, a spiritual uplift for the day. This is especially important to our families that don't have social media. So we want to make sure that we have your information. Next Sunday after church, I will be meeting with people who are interested in joining the church and finding out more about what we do here and, again, how we minister to each other and to the community. And if you are interested in that, please let me know today, but just be prepared to join us after church just for a discussion next week. Today is a day that we need to pause for a moment Sometimes when I see a misty, rainy day, I think the world is crying because it remembers how many lives were senselessly lost 21 years ago. And how many first responders are still suffering the after effects. I know personally two chaplains, fire and police chaplains, that went into Ground Zero in the days after that terrible tragedy. And someday we will hear their stories here. But let us, as we prepare to worship our almighty God this morning, be in prayer for all those families and be in prayer that peace will descend on our world as God wants it so we never have another time like this. Let us be in prayer and prepare to worship our almighty God.
Good morning, everyone. Our centering words today come from Jeremiah chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. At last, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Now will you please stand as you are able and let us join together in our call to worship. God is calling to the least, the lost, the hurting, and all who long for home. God calls us when we wander from the path we should follow. God is calling us and welcoming us back to worship this day. Let us celebrate and rejoice in God's presence with us always and forever. Let us worship God together. Let us pray. God of abundant grace, may your Holy Spirit be with us now as we worship you this day. Open our eyes to truly see one another, that we might discover your presence in the smile of a neighbor. Open our ears to the needs of the world, that we might hear your wisdom in the words spoken around us. And open our hearts to your grace and love, that we might find guidance and strength for the journey, for ourselves and for one another. Amen. Our opening praise today can be found on page 152 of the hymnal, I Sing the Almighty Power of God. be seated and now let us bow before the Lord in prayer let us pray God of abundant grace may your Holy Spirit be with us now as we worship you this day open our eyes to truly see one another that we might discover your presence in the smile of a neighbor. Open our ears to the needs of the world, that we might hear your wisdom in the words spoken around us. And open our hearts to your grace and love, 
that we might find guidance and strength for the journey, for ourselves, for one another. Oh, gracious and loving God, we find it difficult at times to place our trust in you. Too often we look at the world and see only violence, pain, destruction, and signs of hopelessness and despair. Too often we rely on our own strength, our own plans, our own devices, rather than trusting your hand to hold us, your love to sustain us, and your wisdom to see us through. Forgive us, Holy One. Help us to turn to you when we are lost, that we might find our way home. Help us to navigate the treacherous waters of this world, that we might experience your abundant grace. Mercy, love, help us to put our trust in you, that the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus may shine in our lives for all to see. And hear us, O Lord, as we pray this prayer together, as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And hear now these words of assurance. My friends, when we are lost, all is not lost. God is seeking us, ready to turn our lives around, gathering us into the people of God. Let us rejoice in God's mercy. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. And now let us come to that time, remembering that all we have is a gift from God. And we bring back our tithes and our offerings that we may continue the work of God's kingdom. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. and Heavenly Father, hear your people as we humbly bring our gifts to you. There is no gift that can compare with the gift of your Son given that we might know eternal life. We want the whole world to know this good news. Use us, use our gifts of time, talent, and our financial gifts to bring this good news on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now will you please remain standing and join me. We are using a different confession of faith this morning. It is found on page 883 of your hymnal, as well as on our screen today. And we will read this 
together. This is actually uh, a statement of faith given to us by the United Church of Canada because it helps us from time to time to look at what we believe through different eyes. So let us say this together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone. Thanks be to God, amen. And you may be seated. The Hebrew scripture lesson today comes from Proverbs chapter 22 verses 1 through 6 that can be found on page 1017 of the Pew Bible. This is the New International Version. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. In the paths of the wicked are snares and pitfalls, but those who would preserve their life Stay far from them. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Okay. Next. The epistle lesson is Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 19, and that can be found on page 1844 of the Pew Bible. It's titled The Message, and this is Paul speaking to his colleague Tim Timothy. I'm so grateful to Christ Jesus for making me adequate to do this work. He went out on a limb, you know, entrusting me with this ministry. The only credentials I brought to it were violence and witch hunts and arrogance. But I was treated mercifully because I didn't know what I was doing, didn't know who I was doing it against. Grace mixed with faith and love poured over me and into me, and all because of Jesus. Here's a word you can take to heart and depend on. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. I'm proof, public sinner number one, of someone who could never have made it apart from sheer mercy. And now he shows me off, evidence of his endless patience, to those who are right on the edge of trusting him forever. Deep honor and bright glory to the king of all time. One God, immortal, invisible, ever and always, oh yes. I'm passing this work on to you, my child. The prophetic word that was directed to you prepared us for this. All those prayers are coming together now so you will do this well, fearless in your struggle, keeping a firm grip on your faith and on yourself. After all, this is the fight we're all in. Our Psalter for today is Psalm 14, which is found on page 746 in your pew hymnal. We will read this together and responsively. Psalm 14. Fools say in their heart there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none that does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all people 
to see if there are any that are wise who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all alike perverse. There is none that does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the generation of the righteous. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion. When the Lord restores their fortunes, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. This is indeed the word of the Lord. And now we come to a beautiful time in our church year when we will recognize and bless our teachers as well as our students for the coming year. So I'm going to ask all the teachers from our Sunrise School and any other teachers who happen to be present to come forward at this time and we will be referring, uh, bring your, your um, insert with you because we will be referring to this blessing. And we're also being joined by Dr. Judith Stang, who is a member of our school board, and uh, Mr. Reeves, who's also a member of our school board. Would you come join us, please? And for now, let's turn around. The camera's not gonna catch everybody, but you'll be able to hear them. And for those of you that do not know her, Amy Padula is our director. Angela Ewell's, do I say it right? Angela is our assistant director. Uh, Amy, would you introduce the teachers that are here today, please? Uh, yeah, I see her. Um, so over here coming up is Miss Barbara. Um, she's one of our four-year-old teachers. Uh, she works alongside with uh, Miss Jamie, um, who's our other, one of our other four-year-old teachers. Uh, the pastor introduced Angela, she's my assistant director. These are my children, I apologize for that. <laughs> um, and then this is Miss Amanda, she's with our toddlers, our two-year-olds, and Maggie. <laughs> and I'll also introduce Jessica Vasquez, who it's Upland Elementary? Yes. Upland yes. Elementary. You teach? Upland, yes. yes, fourth grade in Upland. And every year I make the same speech to these teachers, and every year I mean it more and more. I could not do what they do. I could not. That if you are here during the week and see how conscientious, how busy, how they go the extra mile, they really are fabulous. This is, if in case you don't know it, Sunrise is our largest ministry outreach. It is our wholly owned private school, not just a daycare center. And it is one of our ways to reach the families of our community. And Mary Hughes should be recognized. She was the secretary and worked with this school for so many years. Yes. And so, if you will all take your insert, please. And I will say to all of you, and I know we have a couple of teachers watching online. I saw them come online. You have recognized God's call in your lives. Will you endeavor to continue to develop your gifts for teaching so as to pass on the values of the Christian faith? Will you be faithful to the task, taking seriously the commitment of time and talent? Will you take seriously your role as a learner, studying diligently and preparing yourselves to be leaders and guiders of those students placed in your trust? If so, answer I will. And go ahead. We have heard the call to teach, and we have responded to that call. We teach, trusting in God's promises to support, sustain, and encourage us through gifts sufficient to the task. We teach, relying on prayer and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We teach, inviting others to recognize and respond to God's call in their lives. We teach, depending on this congregation, Love, hold us in this work. And will the congregation please reply? We 
we pledge ourselves to pray for you and for the educational ministry of this congregation. We pledge ourselves to enable, encourage, and love you in this ministry. We pledge ourselves to be learners with you, diligently studying the scriptures and traditions of the faith. And now we are going to sing, or no, we're gonna bless the backpacks first. So you may all be seated, and the children that have brought backpacks, or adults, come join me up here, please. We are assembling, they are coming. I can tell you're all really, really excited about school. <laughs> Mason, what are you most excited? What, what grade are you going into, Mason? You're going into seventh grade. What are you most excited about this year? Seeing your friends, okay. How about you? What grade are you going into? Third. What are you excited about? You're just excited. You're just excited. Yeah, we need to take notes and we need to learn here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Vince, do you want to tell me what you're excited for this year? Okay, all right. <laughs> All right, we have the gamut from excited to, mm -hmm, because you really haven't had time to see much, have you? But what I would like, these backpacks represent the, uh, the way you're going to carry many things through the coming year. And we want to bless anything that you go through in this coming year. So let's pray, everyone pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon these backpacks which mean for us a blessing to carry on the back of this child for the rest of this year. Be with them when they are laughing, be with them when they are sad, but above all let them know that they do not walk alone, that you are with them and we are with them, for they are your children. Your blessing upon them, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you. And now we're going to remain seated. You may go and go back. As a matter of fact, you may go with Miss Linda and Miss Chris for extended session now. But now we are going to sing, We Thank You, God, for Teachers. The hit words to the hymn are here as well as on the screen. I'll ask Jesse to play it through once and sing this prayerfully and joyfully.
Now will you please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel today comes from our continued study of the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 3 through 7. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the ninety-nine righteous persons who think they need no repentance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. seated. And it's such a great time to come together, isn't it? Back together to celebrate, to bless all the different back... Wait a minute. Do we have a backpack that wasn't blessed? Uh, what, what, what is this? Morgan, you didn't bring the backpack forward. I'm really sorry. I didn't see it. She just, uh, she's trying to pretend it isn't there. Bring it up here. Come on. Come on, bring it up here. And it's heavy. Oh, for heaven's sakes, what is in this backpack? Oh, my goodness. I think we need to sit down. Have a seat. Have a seat. Let's find out about this, because we're here to bless everybody. So what on earth? Oh, Morgan. Uh, you. Jim, you know, well, how long has it been since you had Jim? Okay, I'm not, I don't expect any, what, wait. Dear parents, did you ever see this? No. Okay, I'm not going to read what it is. I'm not going to look into it. What, I, I, Girl Scout cookies? Well, not if they're turning green. Ooh. Oh, and uh, a book, I bet maybe... Maybe, oh, you were supposed to have read this? Oh, well. Recycling. We recycle? What can I say? Oh, nice, you've got a calendar. You can keep track of the days from three years ago. Oh, and, uh, well, that notebook looks like it's been well used. And, oh, there's one thing left in the bottom of the backpack is this pencil. Oh my gosh, you found it. That is my favorite pencil. Get, get your favorite pencil. It's my favorite pencil. Wow. It, it got me like A's on all my tests. You need it. I do. You do. You do need it. Because, listen, didn't, get me the Bible. Bring me the Bible. Didn't we just read something about finding things that were lost? Come here. Oh, something about, well, Jesus is talking about sheep because that's what the people in the early years when, of the first century would have understood. They would have known how happy they were to find a lost sheep because it meant they could keep their job, they wouldn't lose money and revenue. He's not talking about pencils, but he's saying when he has found it, he rejoices, and he is happy that he found that which was lost. Ah. And that's really what we're talking about today. Um, you can go back and sit with your mother, and I will, I will issue the disclaimer up front. Cindy would not allow a backpack like this in her house, okay? Um, but it illustrates how 
Our lives can be so burdened with so many old things that we need to clear the path for God to find that which is lost. And every one of us in one way or another is lost or going to feel lost, especially in a world where we can't even keep track of the tragedies and the shootings and the things that are going on. And we can get to the point where we think it's too much. But if we start clearing out the debris and turning it over to God, I bet God could even make something good out of those stale cookies. We could use, we will use them to feed the birds because God can redeem anything, but we have to be willing to come forward to God with our backpack full of moldy cookies and tragedy and pain and people that have hurt us that we're struggling to forgive. Sometimes those types of things are the only thing, gift we have to put on God's altar. But we do it because we know God will make all things new. And God will equip us. That's why I love to use this reading this morning from Jeremiah, which is part of the lectionary we've studied recently. You're never too young. Or are you too old? Simply say, God, this is what I got. What can you do with it? And you'll be surprised. God will surprise you. That towel can be washed and made as clean as new. There's still a lot of good paper to use in that notebook. That can can be recycled and we can put lead back in the pencil. God can make all things new. We just have to say, God, I'm ready. And that's why when we come together at the beginning of the school year, we're allowing God to make all things new every day in every way. And so as we go from this place today, let us celebrate God's new beginnings and be ready. Okay. Let's stand and celebrate as we sing. Now go forth. Go forth into God's new beginnings. And as you go, take this benediction with you. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit walk with you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Amen.